Hey guys, my name's Troy Hoffman. I'm the founder of Simplaris and the founder of Balance Genics and an executive mentor. What we do every week here is we're creating these things called fireside chats. We basically transform this entire space into a studio every week. Four, three. In the house today, we've got Walt Tomolina. Today in the studio, we have Ty Cannon. He's also one of the top anti-aging doctors in the country and probably even in the world. Henning has been an entrepreneur. Probably one of the highlights of my life. It's just been such an amazing journey with you over these past <laughs> three years. Time. It's been great. No, seriously, it's been really amazing. And what I want you to see is the opportunity to be exposed to all these different entrepreneurs, all these different people that can share their wisdom and insights because one idea can change your life today. They want to be part of the outcome, but they don't necessarily want to be part of the process because it's scary. And if they hear you say collision and they're afraid of conflict, I gotta go to the restroom, yeah, yeah. I'm out of here. I'm out of here, yes, <laughs> they've done that thing. So that, that was, was the best explaining, because this is my new area of growth. Yeah. Like learning to collide well in love and address conflict. Well, one of the most important distinctions was I realized there's over 27 different hormones and hormone metabolites that exert a tremendous effect on your body, your mind, your performance, and whether you live or you die. You can actually literally like apply something to that. You can actually help oh, change absolutely. that. This is what I think and this is what's right. And nothing will change for them because they're not open to change. I'm always open to learning something new and understanding something different. So my thoughts can actually mirror what that is. And, and to me, that's the evolution of health. One new concept, one new thing you can take back to your workplace, one new thing you take back to your company, one new thing you take back to your family to change the way you think and see and change everything about what you're doing and the actions you're gonna take. So I think authenticity is, is the key, right? Being who you are, being true to who you are, and being consistent with that. I believe in consistency and persistence. We want to help you find, follow, and finish your course of destiny in everything that you're doing in your life right now. All right, folks, welcome back today to the Fireside Chats. Uh, in the house today, we've got Walt Tomolinas, the guy, this is a huge opportunity for you today to learn from a guy that's literally went from, from absolute almost nothing to be one of the most successful entrepreneurs you'll ever meet. Uh, we just heard from uh, Scott DeLong in one of the last episodes about humility. This guy personifies humility at the highest level I've ever seen. For someone to be so successful and again, have created so much and, and lead so many people so effectively and had built so many companies and built such a great family and, and they really lived this life to the fullest. He even had a president of the United States of America speak at his company. And this guy is just, just uber hum, humble at the highest level and gives and serves at, at, in ways that most people would never know about unless you're around him. 24-7, I, and I was honored enough and, and lucky enough to actually spend a lot, a lot of time with Walt, and he became a huge mentor in my life. I got to see what he lived, talk about all kinds of questions, from relationships to uh, being leadership, to what you actually do every week. How do, you, how do you fit meditation into your life? Like, how do these things really pay off? How do you really live this whole thing called life, and how do you get it all to fit together so that you can truly live a long-term, successful life have great relationships, have a happy life, have friendships, stay connected with friends over 20, 30, 40, 50 years of your life. And I've seen Walt, he's got friendships still over literally decades and decades and decades of his life and has a connection, has a great family, has the grandkids. He has, I mean, I could, I could talk about the, the amount of wealth this guy has uh, beyond most people's even comprehension. And he started with nothing. He started with a great story that I'd love for him to share today with all of you, with it just him, his mom, and his brother, I think. And, and I would love for you to share the story of like, Walt, how, where you started and, and, and the process you went through to, to be where you're at now. I mean, it's, it's one, of these, one of the hugest stories. And that's why I, I, I fought Walt yesterday. Walt was ready to kill me because I didn't give him a script or something. And I'm not into scripts. I want the heart to come out because there's nothing to prepare here. It's all about what you've done and what you've lived will come out of your mouth. It will come out of who you are. You can't fake this. 
It's not scripted. It's not prepared. And I was like, well, no, we need to have you on because of this. The world needs to hear his story because he's come from, from so little of a base to such a mountaintop. And he's done it so beautifully and elegantly that the world needs to hear this message of, of who you are and who you, how you became that way. And what, what did you do? Like, what did your life look like? And how, what are you learning even today? So where did you start at, Walt? Please tell that story, well, you know, I love this story. It's, it's interesting, you, you make a comment about uh, you know, stature and uh, people mistake power for ego. You know, when you get a certain stature in life and business, uh, you know, uh, people want to call that ego. And so humility is really critical because you don't want, you want to balance yeah. that perception of ego. So uh, power is, is mistaken for ego. And uh, you don't have power, people give you power. They put you on a pedestal. And I always try to do the reverse pedestal. I always try to keep myself at the bottom holding people up. And so my life's all about helping others and, and it always has been. And I would have to disagree that I started with nothing. I think I had everything as a kid that I have now. As a matter of fact, I was just as happy as a child as I was now. And so as a child, uh, you could say I was poor. I, I was poor, but I wanted for nothing. My toys as a child were wooden clothespins and plastic buttons from a button box, from my grandma's button box. And I didn't want for anything. I had a great time playing with those and, you know, make believe. So, all the things I have today, I had then, I've just been able to convert them to stuff. And, uh, and I would say the conversion process was this. Because my mission is to help, because my mission is to contribute, because my mission is always to give back, yeah. the stuff allows you to do more of that. It gives you the leverage to, to do more. So, um, you know, I've had my ups and I've had my downs emotionally, family-wise, financially, but it's been an amazing journey. It's been a journey that I wouldn't, I wouldn't change. And uh, each failure or perceived failure, I'll talk about that in a minute, failures, and each success is a learning experience. And so, um, do you use that for your own benefit or do you share that? And I, and I think, um, I, get, I get in trouble a lot <laughs> because, you know, I'm a consultant, I'm consultative. And I do a lot of that in my business, in my life. And uh, sometimes people don't want you to tell them, they, you know, they want you just to listen to them. Especially women, they just want to be heard. You know, they don't want you to fix all that stuff. And so, uh, because I'm consultative, because I've learned a lot in, in my life, and, and I still, at, at this point, uh, and, you know, rounding the corner to the end of my career, I still feel as though I'm a student of life and I still feel like, like I'm learning. So as a child, I had all those things. I, I, I wanted for nothing uh -huh. and uh, I became a young entrepreneur at a very, very young age. I was selling newspapers, uh, you know, as a kid. Um, I remember lying to my uh, district manager about why I couldn't go soliciting one day. And, and he, he wanted to know what my excuse was. And I said, well, my brother's having a birthday. And he said, well, how old's your brother? I said, oh, he's three months older than me. <laughs> Not knowing that that was physically impossible at the time, uh, but I was the best salesperson. Uh, awesome. So I discovered at a young age that I was a good, good at sales. And um, I would sell papers. Uh -huh. uh, and I was the best solicitor that the Fullerton News Tribune had when I was there as a kid. <laughs> and I took that and I parlayed it into other things as, as my life went on. So Walt, tell, tell about your mom and how you were raised. So I want people to really see the picture. Because your mom was awesome. Like the series, your, your mom served at the highest capacity and really like, gave her life for an, a worthy cause. And, like, and that's where you grew up around. You know? you're, you're giving me chills. And, and the endorphins are flowing over my shoulder right now, thinking of my mom. I lost her a couple of years back. She was 93, lived a wonderful, long life. And uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful. Uh, she was a housekeeper and a cook and uh, did altar linens for the priests, and wow, what, a, what an amazing woman she was. And I got my energy from her, I got my spirituality from her, and I think I got my drive from her because... And she served the local Catholic church. Right, she, was, uh, she worked she for the priests, uh, for the Servite priests for 37 years, and then she went on and did another 15-year stint with the priests in and Brea. You were, and you were raised around this. Right, I, they, were, they were my uncles, they were my brothers, they were my yeah. fathers, you know, I was with them all the time. But uh, my mom really uh, showed me the way because when her feet hit the ground in the morning, the energy just popped right into her persona. And 
I learned a lot from her uh, that way to, to have that high energy and that drive. And, you know, in business, it's, that's required because many times you need long hours and uh, you need persistence. You need, uh, you know, uh, not to give up. And, and my mom fought every battle, you know, having us be, she was the single uh, income earner for uh, many years in our household because my father was not able to work. And so uh, she didn't make any money. I mean, she was, we, we were dirt poor. I think she made less than, you know, less than $200 a month or something, and we still made it by. And uh, what an amazing woman. Uh, I learned a lot to her, and I owe her a lot, and I miss her uh, dearly. Um, one of the things that motivated me in life uh, was an experience as a child. I'm, I know I've shared this with you, so you'd be interested to hear it. The, um, I, I remember hearing my mom weep at the end of the hall. I was in a bedroom with my brother, and uh, m mom was just wailing at night. I couldn't, I, it, was, it was horrific for me, wondering why my mother was so upset. Well, I discovered in a very short period of time, the reason why is that we didn't have the money to pay the bills, and she was upset about that. And so, as a young boy, I made a pact How with myself. I'm gonna guess I was probably seven, eight, nine years old. It was Catch very, the story, very folks. Catch this, this is huge. And, and it is huge because one of the critical issues in success and life and business is that you understand your reason why. And so this became my reason why, and I didn't discover it until I was a mature adult that this was my motivator. And so I made a pact with myself as a young child. My family was gonna want for nothing. When I grew up and I had kids, they were not gonna hear that wailing. And my mom, was gonna want for nothing. When I was able to take care of her, I was gonna take care of her in a grand way and she would want for nothing. And that actually happened, yes. I, 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 that happened in life. My mom moved in with us uh, in the 90s and, and uh, had the Queen's Salon and lived in a mansion and you know wanted for nothing. I took very good care she of her. She still had so much energy when I met her <laughs> at Christmas one year, like she was awesome, <laughs> you know. She's quite a, quite a woman. Uh, left behind quite a, uh, a story, and uh, her family lives, uh, you know, lives her life, uh, you know, yeah. because they've all learned from her. So um, I took care of my kids, took care of my family, took care of my employees, took care of my mom. So now, as I mature, I run around the world looking for people that I can take care of. You know, <laughs> I took yeah. care of all those people I was going to take care of as a kid. Yes. And uh, it's very important for and it's everyone. Funny how much you give, like I've seen Walt write checks. To take his time like massively and serve people and not tell anybody like I was just around it enough we were we were we're buddies we spent a lot of time together hanging out and like I just saw it live but you wouldn't have seen any of it if you weren't hanging out all the time you know what I mean like and it's amazing Walt like you really you give it like a highest capacity it's like uh like the like that story in the bible about you know the one lady puts in like the two coins yeah talents you know what I mean yeah yeah yeah. And like if somebody else throws a lot and makes all this noise or whatever, and it's like, that's you. Like a little two coins. Well, I give a little more than two coins. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, you, but, you, you're right, but though. But everything you have, my you giving, give at a level that's just like so, I don't know. I've seen it. It's like very pure. You know what I mean? And it's not to get a press or attention. Right. It's just like, I was like, wow, some of the things I've seen. It's been... Huge, my giving know? is between myself and my God, and, yeah. and I, I'm humble in that way. Um, I don't need my name on the side of a building. <laughs> I, I just uh, like to help those that need help. Uh, I have a, a special affection, uh, having been around uh, many employees and friends and associates uh, for single mothers, because I don't know how they do it. I, it's just an amazing, it's amazing to see them yeah. succeed and take care of their family. And I guess that comes from my own mother. My, my father was there, but he had had a nervous breakdown in World War II, and it was a Purple Heart recipient. But uh, emotionally, he was not able to cope with uh, life. Yeah. And, and, and back then, they, they did shock treatments and gave him heavy drugs that kind of sedated him. Oh, wow. And so he was not able to work. So it was like having yeah. a single uh, mother household. So yeah. I was raised that way. So I have a great affection for women that do it on their own, whether they're yeah. employees or friends or associates, I, I just, I think they're, they're amazing, they're remarkable, like my mom was, yeah. right. 
And, and I'm so blessed to have everything, you know, that anyone would need. Uh, so my job and, uh, is to give back. You know, you're not taking all this stuff with you. And, you know, I, I guess like Warren Buffett says, I don't know, make my kids billionaires. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care what my kids have. Uh, you know, I think they're successful in their own right, and I should speak to that. I'm very proud of my children, uh, all of my children. Uh, the sign of success in life in anything you do in life is those children. And wow, am I proud of my kids. Uh, two of them, my oldest daughter and my son, Christy and John, work in my company with me. So I feel, kind of feel like Donald Trump. I got my kids working with me now. And my youngest has moved to Texas. But I'm so proud of all of them. In their own way, they've all been remarkably successful. And, and I have to uh, you know, give kudos to their mother. You know, and and we I think we did a good job raising them. That's that's they're the true sign kids. of success when you have, you know, kids that are running around doing what they're doing and and, and successful like they are. So they're great grandkids. Yeah, well, I have grandkids, not great grand. Stop that, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that old no, no, they're, 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 yet. They're, they're great <laughs> grandkids. We, we have wonderful grandchildren. Wonderful yet. grandchildren. Six. <laughs> I, I have six. Not, I have three boys. <laughs> three boys. Three girls. Just had two new ones. John had a baby. Tiff had a baby. Wow. And so, uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, it, it starts life over. It's the beginning uh -huh. again. You know, it makes you young and it makes you useful. And I think that age is just a number. Yeah. I've come to the realization that um, anything man-made is not real. And uh, so th this number that we put on ourselves uh, is just a number. What is, age. is it real? Yeah. What is that? You yeah. know? I mean, if people guess at your age, sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong. It's not relevant. You know, it's, it's how you feel and your energy level that's critical, I think. Your energy level is insane. Like, I, you go like 24 seven, massive energy. Like, the only <laughs> time you ever chill is when he, he does meditation. Walt does meditation every day. And it's one of the things we teach here is like, why do you do meditation every day? And like the power of it, but your energy, how in the world have you kept your energy up so high for so many decades, <laughs> funny. not burning out. I like, think I've crazy. calmed down a lot. I've, I've seen videos of myself doing training at 20 and 30 years old, and yeah. man, I, I looked like I was on crack cocaine. <laughs> I was so so strung out, and it's funny. I, I have an insurance claim going just before I came over here, uh -huh. and I'm talking to the insurance company, and, and the lady says, you always talk this fast? <laughs> I said, I'm in a hurry, ma'am. I got to go do a video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <Walt. laughs> so, so uh, you know, I think it's important to, um, I'll tell you about the story about meditation. Go for it. I have these confluences that happen in my life where more than one mentor come together at one time uh -huh. and tell me to do something or suggest something. And, and give me a, a higher level of awareness. And probably 19, let's see, let's, see, let's go about 2013. I missed mass and I flipped the television on just to check out uh, what was there, waiting for the next mass. And uh, Oprah's on there. And I, I, I had loved Oprah because I've been listening to her on Sirius Satellite. I'm disappointed she's off the air now, but wow, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. She was interviewing Eckhart Tolle. And what were they talking about? Meditation. Meditation. And so I had just heard this from a mentor, Dr. Wayne Dyer. I, I had just heard this from uh, a mentor, um, Deepak Chopra. And so there's my confluence. Three people together telling me at the same time, you got to meditate. So I said, okay, I'm going to try this meditation. Well, I rested, I studied, I, I figured out how to do it. I'm on my sofa. Uh, nine o'clock at night, closing my eyes. I wake up in the middle of the night. It's 2.30. And I said, well, I, well, I wasn't sleeping. What, what happened? I went to another dimension. I'm not sure where I went to. So I went to bed, went right to sleep. And I realized it wasn't sleep because I was able to go right to sleep when I went to bed. Yeah. Next night, I did the same thing. I don't know. I woke up at three o'clock in the morning. So I said, I've got to get a system set up here because I don't want to be sleeping on the couch at night. So now I have an alarm for 30 minutes and I try to meditate at least once a day. Uh, for 30 minutes. I have some sound. I'd recommend it. It's called Wishes Fulfilled Meditations by Dr. Wayne Dyer. Uh, it's a sound tape Great. you can put on in the background. And, and uh, what, what happens with me, it's kind of like going to church. Uh, I, I'm, I attend Mass every Sunday. I'm Catholic. And uh, um, I, I believe that centers me in getting my week started. And so I'll start with Mass, and that's the beginning of my week. And it's the same thing with meditation. It's the beginning of my life. Uh, when you uh, meditate, 
you go to another dimension. And I can't describe it, you just have to do it, you have to learn it. But it's like a really great workout. I work out three days a week with uh, weights. And I'll tell you what, it really, it, the, the endorphins come out of you and it, learn, it teaches you how to center yourself. So what does meditation give you? Like out of curiosity, like what is meditation and why is it so important? Well, it puts everything in perspective. It gives you balance and that is my uh, goal in life. Um, I have a, a coach and mentor that I meet with once a week and uh, because I am a student of life, I'm always learning. And you've had and a coach or a mentor for probably 30 years. 30 the years. The same coach. Same coach, same mentor. Same, same coach. For 30 years. I have many mentors. He's Maybe one of them. One of them. And, right. and it's important to have coaches and mentors in life. Like I have so many coaches and so many mentors in my life to constantly have all these people giving me feedback from multiple angles so that I don't have any blind spots. So I, I learn effectively how to live this life so I can move it forward. And Walt's one of my mentors in, in that capacity because even asking about meditation catches. This is a guy who's successful as heck. He's not trying to go to the next level. And he's applying meditation to his life. And he's sharing why is it so valuable that we set time to get our minds clear again, to get to be able to take the time and see what the impact of doing meditation and what his routine is. Catch this. We're getting real, true, raw lessons of like what he actually does. And we're constantly sharing what is the truth beyond the truth beyond the truth of, of people that have actually done great things. So what, why well, that, that's interesting. You, you brought a, a good point up. I want to talk about balance because that's where meditation leads. But, but there was this wise man that taught me, I'm sure you've heard this before, that you're the average of the five people you hang out the most with. I think you taught me that. And, and it's true. And so when you meditate, who are you hanging out with? You're hanging out with God. That's a very powerful part of your mentor group. I mean, he's got to be the chairman of your board. And, uh, and you know, that, that your words haunt me because <laughs> sometimes you're not hanging out with the people you should be hanging out with. The troublemakers in your life, you know, <laughs> get rid of those. So uh, thank you for that because it does uh, remind me what I need to do. And so mentor is very, very important. You don't need one, you need many. And you need many in different areas of your life. So let's talk about balance. You're asking what meditation does and I think it gives me balance. Yeah. And like spirituality does. And so what is balance? You know, you have your family, you have your physical, you have your financial. And uh, I'll tell you what, I struggle with this every day. It's, it's a great achievement, but it's a journey. It's not a destination. You can't have balance in life unless it's always. And so it's a constant, I wouldn't say struggle, but it's a constant challenge to uh, be balanced. And so as an example, uh, I'll be very busy at work and 2.30 will roll around and my goal is to exit the building by 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll get, I get 10 hours worth of work done in six hours, you know, and if I can focus or I'm having a focused day. And so, uh, boy, I tell you what, if it's 3.30 and I'm still sitting at my desk, I'm, I'm having a heart attack because I want to get on the road and get home yeah. so that I can enjoy the other part of my life. Why do we do the work that we do? Um, I want to take a freeze frame here and just pause for a minute. I want to give you accolades for what I've seen you do here. You took this warehouse and you made it into Beverly Hills. I just have to compliment you for what you've done with your business life. I've watched you grow over the last decade and man, you've gone light years since I've known you. But to accomplish something like this, this is really amazing. This is part of your achievement, but it's only part of your stuff. And so I encourage everyone that's watching this to get back to this issue of balance. If you want to have a quality of life, then there's three things that you need to do. It's got nothing to do with finances. Uh, the first thing is you need to have non-resistance. Whatever happens, you want it just to go through you. You want to have non-judgment. Uh, one year for Lent, you know, Catholics give stuff up for Lent, and so the sacrifice I made one Lent was to give up judging. You want to talk about a hard job, try to go through a day, let Not alone judging. 40 days without judging anybody or anything. And the last one is non-attachment. So, so to live at a higher level it, with a balanced life, here's what you need to do. One, you need non-resistance. Whatever the universe throws at it, let it go right through you. It really doesn't matter. Uh, number two, non-judgment. You know that person that's driving slow in front of you? It's not going to change your life. It's, it's, you don't have to get three seconds ahead of them to win. And, and non-attachment. 
what happens, good or bad, happens to everybody. Uh, you know, Troy, you and I have talked about this. Life isn't fair. Get over it. Yes. It's okay. Non-resistance, non-judgment, non-attachment. A la Deepak Chopra. I love this. Chopra. Non-resistance, non-judgment, non-attachment. I'm not going to resist whatever is being thrown at me. I'm like, okay, I'll find a way to like change and shift. I'm not going to judge the person. I'm not going to be like, why did this person do this? I'm like, they're they're a bad person because they did this, or they're a bad like they're they're an evil person. I'm all, like we place so much judgment on others, and we don't know what's going on in their lives. And non-attachment. Well, crap. The situation happened. It just happened. Car crash. Okay, next. Onward. Like this. Yeah, shitty let problem me ask occurred. this question. Boom. Next thing we have to deal with. You well, know? Who am I to judge anyone or anything? Who am I? I'm not the creator. You know, who am I to judge? Uh, I could give you lots of examples, but. They're not popular when I say them, so I'm not going to say them. I want, to, I want to share with you what I share with anyone that wants to do better in, in, in life. And, and this has been with me for many, many years because of a mentor, E. James Rohn. One of our good friends is, uh, was uh, in, on his team. And uh, Jim Rohn taught me this. Uh, you need to know what it is you want. And you need to know when you want it. You need to know why you want it. Circle that one, why. You need to know what's the price I'm willing to pay in order to get that. And then you have to ask the question, am I willing to pay the price? So let me review those. What do I want? When do I want it? Why do I want it? What's the price? Am I willing to pay the price? And the critical issue with those is, what do I want? You gotta be specific. You tell me this too. Write it down, Walt, write it down. What's that goal? Yes. So you gotta be very specific about it. And maybe a list as long as you can be, it doesn't matter how long the list is. It could be three pages, it could be three sentences, it doesn't matter. Make a list of what you want. Then ask, when do I want it? You know, we get stuck in this one year trap. Listen, that's the calendar. That's man-made, that's not real. Time is not real. We, we invented that. I know the sun comes up, the sun goes down. Who says that's attached to time? I know this is a bar, bizarre experience for you to hear this, but it's true. So the when is a critical issue. You could have it tomorrow if you figure out how and you go out and get it and you put yes. enough energy in it. But the critical issue is the mom story. Why? What is your motivator? What turns you on? What gets you out of bed in the morning? What makes you want to help other people? What makes you want to do what you do? What is your motivator? That's a critical issue. Why? And then we miss the last two frequently in, in our plan. What's the price? Do I have to go to bed early? Do I have to get up early? Do I have to read more? Do I have to not hang out with that person? Do I have to hang out with him more? You know, what do I need to do? What changes do I need to do? What do I need to learn? What do I need to achieve? And, and what is the price I have to pay to get those things on my list? And the last one is, am I willing to pay the price? If you're not willing to pay the price, take it off the list. Because you're playing a game with yourself. You're wasting you're time. In fantasy land. That's correct. Fantasy well, you know, land. this is this is real life, you know, and, and so uh, we've discovered it's not fair. And the other thing is, <laughs> we're not getting out alive. <laughs> so in my life, I need to prepare for the next life, and that is, you know, my eternity with my creator. And I think that's a critical issue for everyone to think about when you think about balance. That's awesome. Folks, like, we might, Walt could be like, drop the mic and just walk off stage now. Rewatch this show. Like, what he just went through right there. If you actually go through this process and, and really take it seriously, be like, okay, what do I specifically want in my relationships? Like, my, my, my love relationships. What do I want in my business life? What do I want in my bank account personally in my life? How do I want my, my giving experience in my life to be? Where does this motivation come from? What happened in your past that you can actually use as fuel to fire you up and say, man, this is my purpose, this is my passion, this is why I'm gonna do this, this is why I'm gonna spend the time, the money, the sacrifice, the, the pain, the problems, and all the toil and all the crap that we deal with to achieve these things because we have these experiences inside of us that will drive the crap out of us to make us actually manifest these visions because we want to have more, we want to do more, we want to be more because this is part of that calling. And part of it, I don't know, whatever you guys wanna call it, God, 
the universe, but there's something that's instilled in all of it, that, that seed of greatness that has been already birthed inside of you. And there's a calling on your life. There is a reason you're here. There's something that's been poured inside of you that you must live out this, this thing that's inside of you because it'll benefit so many people and transform not only your life, but the lives of everybody around you and empower them to find their greatness inside of them. And they'll live out their greatness and impact thousands and thousands of people, but it's going to be contingent on you stepping up. It's going to be contingent on you finding and accessing your why. Where do you want to go? Why do you want to go there? And your willingness to pay the sacrifice. Success is this. Catch this. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Success is a willingness to bear pain to achieve a mighty purpose. Success is the willingness to bear pain to achieve a mighty purpose. Purpose. And the question I have for you today, folks, is what is your mighty purpose? Whose life are you going to impact? Are you going to live a life like Walt and be able to go from wherever you start and literally impact so many people that no one knows what this guy gives? No one sees his heart. No one, no, only one person at a time may see a glimpse of something. But the impact is massive. The number of the hundreds and hundreds of employees he's poured into over decades, the people he's been able to life's touch, the family he's built is massive and amazing and he's lived this dynamic life because he found his purpose he found a pain in the past that has produced the possibility of the present he's living in today so Walt, i am so grateful you're here i know you, i'm so grateful you took time out of your day to do this um i know you're busy as hell i love you and grateful that you joined the show with us um thank you for being in my life walt and this is just one of many things we will still do in the future together, I feel like. So thank you so much for being on the show, Brian. I would like to I thank you, you too, Troy. I think you've been, sure a, you've been an amazing you. man in my life. I just, uh, I love you like a brother. When Troy and I met uh, years back, uh, I knew instantly that uh, we were simpatico. I knew that we were brothers. And, and uh, didn't, didn't you think that yeah. same way? Standing in your kitchen, we just hit it off instantly. Yes. What an amazing guy you are to be around. I, I, I want to congratulate you for your achievements, and uh, not only in business, but in your life. I've seen you grow so dramatically in the last decade, and uh, I, I'm very privileged to have a good man like you in my life. Uh, not because of success, but because of the, uh, the quality that you bring to my balance. And I'd like to close by um, giving you a, a little tip. I think that there's one important thing that, that, that we, I'd like to share. My business coach reminds me every time I have a big project, you know, whatever your project is, break it down into tiny, quick, and easy steps. And I mean, just make lots of tiny, little, quick, and easy steps. It's so much easier when you break things down into, we call them whistle stops. <laughs> and the last thing I want to share is that you remind me of in your closing statements, and that is this, that to me, there's two critical issues in life right now, and that is peace and love. A uh, great 20th century philosopher by the name of John Lennon said, all you need is love. That's true. Take whatever love you have inside of you and spread it around the world to create the peace that we need to live in harmony and, and to have the balance that is so valuable. So thank you, Troy, for everything you've brought to my life. What an amazing man you are. What an amazing gift, God when he puts you in my life. So thank you for who you are. Thank you, Walt. And thank you, folks, for watching this episode of Fireside Chats with Walt Tomalinas, folks. Thank you.